The conflict between Christianity and the occult has compelled some to reject entirely the influence of God in early America. In February of 2005, CBSNews.com posted an article titled Our Godless Constitution. In it, author Brooke Allen wrote that our nation was not founded on Christian principles, but on Enlightenment ones. God only entered the picture as a very minor player, and Jesus Christ was conspicuously absent. A chief issue of debate are the very symbols that define the United States. Where did they come from, and what or who exactly do they represent? For many, the answers lie in the secret societies. I mean, you can see their influence uh, on the back of the Great Seal of the United States, where in 1782, uh, they put on a pyramid cap by an all-seeing eye with the slogan beneath, Novus Adoro Seclorum, the new secular order of the world. That was in 1782. It was put on the back of the Great Seal of the United States, hidden there until... Uh, about 1935 when it was taken off the back of the Great Seal of the United States and put on the back of the American dollar bill. Where it is today symbolizing the influence of the secret societies on America. And you know there are some of our Christian ministries that want to tell you that a cult symbol is a Christian symbol. It just goes to show how effectively the Christians have been misled and they've been misled intentionally by people who've infiltrated the Christian movement and have told them, oh, this is a Christian symbol. Well, where in Christian symbology uh, do you come up with a pyramid? Where in Christian symbology do you come up with a glorified eye This is all the symbology that everybody who's involved with the occult understands. The glorified or all-seeing eye is known as the Eye of Horus, one of the most important gods of the Egyptian mysteries. Other pagan icons include the Washington Monument, an obelisk normally dedicated to the Egyptian sun god. Meanwhile, the idea for the Statue of Liberty was taken from the Colossus of Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and combined with the imagery of the goddess of ancient Babylon, Queen Semiramis. But what do these esoteric elements tell us about the founding fathers of America? Who were they? And what was the light by which they saw the world and themselves in it? The majority of the people who were in the founding fathers were either deists or else they were free thinkers or they were Rosicrucians or they were Masons or they were all of the above. But the issue is not black and white. Researchers are careful to point out the God-fearing nature of early Americans. If we take the founding of America as the time when the Puritans came over, if that's the time that was taken and the landing of the pilgrims, you remember, and, and that, that date there, if that was taken as the founding of America, there was no question. These are solid Christians out and they were looking for freedom. They did not want to be persecuted by either the, um, the church in England, which was the Anglican Church. So the Puritans would have been persecuted as dissenters. Nevertheless, so if we take that date, that era, when the Puritans came over, they were coming over seeking um, freedom, religious freedom. And so they wanted to settle the land and build their little churches and worship the Lord as he told us to do and in the manner in which he told us to do in the scriptures. That's what they wanted to do. So without question, it was settled in the beginning as a Christian nation, an opportunity to come over freely. Unfortunately, you've got other people who wanted to do the same thing, but they weren't necessarily Christians. By far, the chief source of contention is the involvement of the Founding Fathers with secret societies, namely Freemasonry. Certainly at the time when the Declaration of Independence was signed, many of these people were involved in masonry, no question at all about it. But it wasn't because they were dedicated to the, to the esoteric principles of masonry. Many of these people were strong Christians. In America, initially, the men that were elected, I believe 90% uh, of them were all God-fearing men. People, you know, on the esoteric side want to say, oh, this was a Masonic country. 
And there's an element of truth in that because uh, certainly there were many Masons, you know, uh, once America was established, who were working in key positions. I believe the truth is somewhere in between, as it usually is, the two extremes. It's a timeless struggle. Both sides of this power struggle are in full play. The sides of the secret societies trying to push forth the new Atlantis. And so it doesn't surprise me that most of these men and the in the uh, Continental Congress or the signings of the Declaration of Independence were, were Masons or whatever. That doesn't surprise me, it doesn't even bother me. Because I know that underneath them is a vast horde of people that were Biblical Christians. Like most countries, America has a complex history. And any attempt to condense and filter the United States past and present into a singular narrative is blatantly ignorant. And to try to move forward with a singular vision negates real debate and compromise. But the current discourse in our country is doing just that. Many in the government and the media would like us to believe that those who have opposing views on policy are actually un-American, that they threaten the very fabric of the country. Discussions on important matters are so divorced from actual reality that lies can be passed as truth with little effort. Right now, for Christian conservatives, this tactic has been very effective in dividing the nation between those who make policy based on faith and those who don't. And those who don't are vilified as being immoral and unpatriotic. In conservatives' eyes, America is a Christian nation, based on Christian values. And while the majority of the American population has always been Christian, and religion has played an important role in America's history, the misconception that this country is in any way a theocracy, and that our laws should be based on biblical teachings, is profoundly dangerous. First, America was founded on Christianity. This is a powerful fabrication that strengthens Christians' claims and at the same time rewrites history. The Founding Fathers were indeed spiritual men, but most of them were deists, who summarily rejected the institution of Christianity. They understood the danger of basing their new government on religion. The Constitution has no mention of God. The word is not written once in the entire document, nor is it in the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment protects the government from being controlled by religion, and secondly, protects the freedom to practice religion. The concept of separation of church and state is conveniently forgotten by those who wish to inject God into public law. Second, America was built on Christianity. Again, Christian values have always been important to most Americans, but the economic, political, and cultural dominance of the United States was built on many different ideas and events. Agriculture, slavery, industries of textile, steel, machinery, and weapons, migrant workforces, business, finance, invention, scientific breakthrough, space travel, war and military influence, international media, art, music, the movie industry, corporations, corporations, and corporations. The American dream has much more to do with materialism and personal success than goodwill toward men. Because capitalism is in stark contrast to the teachings of Christ. The common moniker that God helps those who help themselves is nowhere in the Bible and completely contradicts Jesus' actual words. Christ really wasn't too big on wealth, and his views on the rich could be interpreted in modern discussion as socialistic. Christian conservatives who supposedly follow Jesus' teachings and at the same time celebrate self-reliance and see government programs that benefit the poor as evil and socialist believe in two completely incompatible ideas. So if America wasn't founded or built on Christianity, then why is the mention of God so prevalent in our government? Why is In God We Trust our national motto? Why is it on our money in every courtroom? Why is Under God in our Pledge of Allegiance? Most of these editions of God were added in the early and mid-1900s as a direct result of the growing threat of communism. It was a way for America to differentiate itself from that ideology, to gain a moral high ground. These editions are relics of a different time that completely negate the original intent of our founders and our constitution and many people are constructing a new narrative that places Christianity at the forefront of political and social ideology. This isolation of science and reason from the political discourse is an obvious detriment to creating comprehensive and forward-thinking policies, and the lack of integrity of some news outlets makes for scientifically illiterate citizens. For those who want America to be a Christian theocracy, what aspects of the Bible should we enact? The horrible bigotry and social inequities? or the compassionate words of Christ? How can we base our country's laws on a book that has been interpreted in so many malicious and immoral ways throughout time? If we follow the actual words, then slavery should still be practiced, and women should have no individual rights. 
in order to create a nation that is fair and just for everyone, believer and non-believer alike, then it must progress with a purely secular government.